new intro so much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two-year period plus that i've been doing this um thank you for showing your uh love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you a utah man accused of kidnapping and harming a 19 year old college student pled with the judge to let him be home for christmas despite the serious felony charges against him Brent Neil Brown, age 39, appeared in court before Judge Wallace Lee on charges that he held Snow College student Madeline Allen captive at his home. When asked by the judge if he had anything to say before receiving his bail conditions, Brown stated that he would like to be home for Christmas. Despite his request, Lee ordered him to be held without bail until his hearing on January 10th. Brown was charged with several felony counts, including harming, aggravated kidnapping, and aggravated assault. He allegedly met the college co-ed online, then picked her up from her dorm December 13th. In the ensuing days, Brown allegedly became violent with the teen. He took her phone and her wallet, tied her up while he was at work, and threatened to go after her family if she left or told anybody about him. When Allen didn't return to her dorm the day after, she was picked up, her roommates reported her missing. Investigators used cell phone tower information to track Allen down to Brown's home. Brown answered the door Saturday and stated that he was alone, but authorities discovered Allen in a basement room where she was naked and covered in coal. Her parents stated Sunday that they were overjoyed to be reunited with their daughter. Quote, we are so grateful. We are elated. We couldn't describe the feeling that we had as we embraced each other. All right. So yet again, this is another video dealing with, uh, in a sense, for all intents and purposes, because we're all adults here. This is, in a sense, a child, right? Even though she is, you know, 19, still a child, right? Doesn't really fully understand um, the world. Um, you know, a little bit, you know, bright eyed, you know, bushy tail, however the old saying goes. And, you know, usually when you have kids that age, they tend to um, do a lot of things that don't seem to really make sense. And that could potentially endanger their lives, as we can clearly see here. Right. This young woman decided to meet up with a 30 something year old man. Pay attention to that. She is 19. He is 30 something years old. Clear cut, there is a lifetime of a difference right there in both Miles Walked on this planet, um, life experiences, and you know, anything else that you can just so happen to throw in there. And then on top of that, decided, like, hey, we're not even going to really talk for you know a long time or anything like that. It was like, all right, we're just going to you know talk for a few seconds and then we're going to meet up. And this is what happens. Right now, I do want to sit up there and say that no matter, you know, how long you just so happen to talk to somebody, anything can potentially happen. Right. Anything can happen. But we all know. Right. Whenever you happen to just talk to somebody, you don't just get up and just automatically, you know, meet that person. That's, you know, pretty dangerous, you know, to do. A lot of things can transpire, um, you know, and happen. Usually most people sit up there and say, you know, give us some time, you know, sort the person out, um, allow you allow yourself to, you know, fill the person out to see, you know, mentally where they are, um, you know, what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go with the situation, you know, because you, you want to go through as many safety checks as you can um, to at least, in a sense, protect yourself which clearly um, this 19 road did not do at all. And, you know, because of that, and also because, you know, she put herself in a, you know, a dangerous type of situation, you know, things like this ended up happening. Um, I'm very happy that, you know, she is alive and well, and that, you know, she is back with her family, because I'm pretty sure that nobody who is a parent or who has um, loved ones, um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they would never want anything like this, 
um, to happen to anybody, right? The the loss of a child is um, a horrible feeling, right? Especially as a parent, where your main job is to you know protect your child. In a moment in time that you can't, you feel the utmost you know worthless and defenseless because it's like you feel like you failed, right? So you know I can only imagine, you know what the parents, um, you know felt you know, during that time. And I'm pretty sure at certain points they were angry that their daughter, 19, decided to just meet up with a random guy and, you know, ended up disappearing. Because if they didn't end up, who, whoever the, the cops are that was working this case or whoever it is, they deserve, they deserve like whatever, you know, medals that they can get. Because if they didn't act as quick as they did, this would be a vastly different story the parents would have had a vastly different statement. And more than likely, this guy would have either been on a run or he just would have been still in like the same place waiting to get another college student. And also, this is one of the main things that I happen to talk about, um, you know, every so often. Um, And for whatever reason, Right. Whenever it's stories like this, these stories, you know, don't get publicized in the media. Whenever it's somebody of the reflective majority of the dominant society, magically stories like this, they don't really get publicized like this. They're not, you know, uh, posted all over, you know, for the world to see. They'll literally have it on a few stations. It'll be a little blip, you know, on the map. And then after everything is said and done, you know, that's pretty much it. And then the other thing is, I find it hilarious that they even allowed him to speak the words of, hey, I want to be home for Christmas. Huh? You just literally kidnapped a student and committed horrendous and atrocious acts. And you have the gall to sit up here and ask to be home for Christmas. Like I said, this should further prove to people the things that I state when it deals with the Dhamma society and the system that they have in place. That no matter the acts that he committed, he still felt, right, because he's a part of the dominant society, that, yo, I understand what I did, but, yo, I, uh, it is what it is. Y'all can still put me on trial, but let me be home for Christmas. Huh? And then my greatest question is if he is home for Christmas, right, if if that did go through, right, because obviously the bill didn't go through. So obviously he stayed in jail and rightfully so. He should actually have prison time. Right. Don't pass. Go like you're you're just you're out of there. My thing is, if he would have went home for Christmas, right, what family and friends would have shown up? That's my question. And then if anybody did show up, knowing the fact of what it is that he did, All of them need to be thrown in prison and or jail. Like I said, because that's showing you a greater problem. So almost to an extent, I would have actually liked to see him be home for Christmas just so I could potentially see the individuals that would still be around him and communicating with him, knowing the facts of what he did. Like I said, it's highly interesting. This is how you catch other people who are into the same things or who condone the exact same things so technically within a sense i i almost feel that they missed out on an opportunity to capture other people more than just him because some of the most dangerous people are not just the people that you see directly in front of you but it's the people that enable this type of behavior that enable this type of language Those are some of the most dangerous people because, of course, you got one person doing it. But if you have enablers, they can, in a sense, speak to hundreds, if not thousands. Therefore, creating more of him later on down the road. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I stated in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.